Good morning. I uh, want to apologize. A little bit late today, but we had a phone call to the other side of the world through using our phone, through the messenger and that. And so I wanted to just confirm some more outreach of David's song, uh, both in the country of Thailand and Myanmar and also India, possibly. So we're looking at lots of things that are going forward. Thank you for joining us. And we pray that as you've come together this morning to do another Discipleship Empowerment Word, as we look together concerning this, we are looking at the word fear. And again, uh, it's an unusual word to talk about during our challenging times in the world, but I believe that it's an appropriate word at this time to be able to continue to look at what God wants to teach us through this whole word fear. And we've gone through the Gospels now. We, we know that uh, how there was such fear of people and the fear of the unknown. But uh, that's some things we need to understand because sometimes we struggle with that too, amen? I mean, it's no difference between then and now. We can still have a fear of people. We have fears of the unknown. and But we know, we know that the Scriptures are there to help us how to handle certain things as a disciple. As we're pilgrims here passing through this world, as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, we need to understand how to deal with fear. And I must admit, the more I study this word fear, in some ways, the more I get excited because it actually simplifies things. It, it really boils it all down to just either you follow after the things of this world or you follow after the things of our God, our Lord Jesus Christ. You follow after the things of this world. You go through struggles and trials and, and challenges because we don't understand. We don't have the knowledge. We don't have the information. But if we go and put ourselves in the hands of Jesus Christ, he will then help us to be able to overcome the fears of this world and to be able to have the peace that passes all understanding. And so when we look into the book of Acts now, our journey is taking us into Acts today, and see how, how the early church dealt with fear. And it seems like, in some instances also, God wanted them to get to understand that they needed to fear the Lord. Uh, and, and again, that idea of fear, I wish we could come up with another word that was better, but to have that honorable respect of the Lord. And when they didn't, there was consequences to what they did or didn't do. And we're going to see that as we go through the book of Acts. And But again, I don't want to see that we think of God as that we're, we're cringing because we're afraid you know, that we're going to be hit or we're going to be beaten. That's not the idea what the Lord wants us to understand here. He wants us to understand that when we come into his presence and have that honorable, holy respect for who he is, he draws us closer to his heart. He draws us closer to, into his will. And not only that, but he then pours out upon us his grace, his mercy, his peace, all those things come because we come into his presence as honoring him as as king honoring him and respecting him for his authority his ability and that he wants us and desires of us to fulfill his will and that's a big challenge but that's where it's all at and so when we go into acts chapter 2 verse 43 we have the beginning of the the church you could sort of say the church movement or the house church movement, because right here, as we get into Acts, we, we see uh, that, you know, that 3,000 people from all over the known world at that time uh, come to know Christ. They become to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul preach, or not Paul, Peter teaches them and preaches to them about repentance. And for the Jews, he gives them a history lesson about what God has been doing and how Christ is the Messiah. And, of course, the people come to the place and say, what must, what must we do? And, and, of course, he says, repent. And, of course, they repent and they be baptized. And now they are, for people who haven't gone home, we have a number probably of house churches in Jerusalem 
and they're meeting night by night, gathering, or by the day, whichever it may be, they're gathering, because now they're hungry for the Word. See, that's the interesting thing, is when you get a proper honoring, uh, reverence, respect for our God, you will see that what happens, you get a greater hunger for our God. And they got a greater hunger. Uh, all of a sudden, as they gave their lives to Jesus Christ, they got a hunger for more of God. They wanted to know more of who He is and what He wants to do through their lives. And so we see here that as we come to the place that the church begins to grow in Acts chapter 2, it says something interesting in verse 43. It says, Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And I thought, wow, isn't that interesting? Because they have this reverent, holy respect, the people did. They began to realize, okay, now we're in the presence of God. Now we're coming together. And that's why I say, wouldn't our morning services be different if people would come in and say, hey, we're in the presence of God? That's something we've lost in North America. I know a lot of times we say that, oh, well, in some of the old traditions and that, you know, they're all stuffy and that, and they're, you know, there's nothing there. But, you know, sometimes we need to have a holy reverence, respect for our God. And that when we gather together, we're coming together in His presence. We're coming together as He is the head of His church. Amen. And so we see here that as the people began to gather together in their, in their house churches and then their groups, they had a fear, it says, they then fear came upon every soul because now they were understanding every soul that honoring and humbling and respectful adoration for God was now upon their soul they weren't that it it wasn't now just a religion it moved from a religion it wasn't just another religion and we'll see in the book of acts that how often people you know, we're getting it. You know, they were changing religions like they were changing their clothes. But what was different with Jesus Christ, this is not a religion. This is a personal relationship of walking in the Lord Jesus Christ and being part of his kingdom. And because of that, they had they had a, a, a honorable, righteous, reverent respect for Jesus Christ. And when they came into his presence, interesting to see that as they came into his presence with this attitude what happened there was signs and wonders you know maybe that's why when we look into mark and luke it talks about these signs shall follow you these things will happen and why do they happen because when we, the more we're tapped into jesus christ the more the power and the anointing of the holy spirit can flow through us amen and i you know i that's why i just i can't can't say enough about this idea about fearing the Lord, having a righteous, holy, honorable respect for the Lord. Because as we draw closer to him, you know, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, James says, and he will lift you up. When we have that, I believe we see what's going on in this house church, that signs and wonders follow. So there's a direct connection of how you look to God as your Lord, as your Savior, as your Christ, right? Because we told, we said His name is Lord Jesus Christ. He is our Lord. That means He's our Master. He's the one we humble ourselves to. He's the one that has the power and authority, right? So we humble ourselves to Him as Lord. Then we hum humble ourselves to Him as Jesus, who is our Savior and who will save us from the struggles and trials that we face. And then we humble ourselves before the Lord as Christ who is the one, who is the anointed Messiah, who comes and to be our Lord and Savior, but comes to be that with anointing. See, that's the thing we need to understand, is that when we come to Christ as Lord, He is also, we are coming to Him as the anointed one. When we're coming to Him as Savior, we're coming to Him as the anointed. His anointing flows through His Lordship, and His anointing flows through His salvation. And through all of that, can you believe it? The early church was saying, and there was signs and wonders that ha took place. We're saying, okay, where is God today? 
I think God hasn't moved anywhere. We got to ask, where are the disciples of Christ today? Where have they moved away to? Where have they got off track? Because I think if we come back to a holy, righteous, reverend respect for our God as Lord, as Savior, as Christ the Anointed, as King, we will see. Forget about all that other stuff that it's out about there. We will see the anointing of God coming through our lives, coming through the church with power and authority. Amen. And that's where we're needing to head. Well, in Acts chapter 5, uh, verse 11, so it goes on again. And what happened here, we got some people that figured, well, they can come in and lie to not only the disciples, but they thought they could try to deceive the Holy Spirit. So again, they didn't have a righteous, holy respect for God. They they thought it was, I think they were thinking that it was just another religion and, you know, God doesn't see all things. Let me tell you, God sees, <laughs> you can pull down every blind in your house and you can turn off every light in the house, but God still sees us. God knows exactly what we're doing and where we're walking and what we're involved in and, and we can't hide it from him. But anyway, the early church, some of the early people who were then, you know, excited, they, they wanted to follow Christ and they, they were now selling their some of their land. And it wasn't that they could uh, not choose to say, okay, we're going to sell our land and we're going to give 50000 to the church and we're going to keep 20000 to ourselves. That wasn't the issue. The issue was, is that they came in and they say, you know, when we were told, how much did you get for the land? Well, we only got 50. In reality, they got 70. And that was the problem. They lied. They lied to the Spirit of God. And what God wanted to do at this moment with the early church was to put a reverend, <laughs> um, holy, uh, honorable respect for who he is in the heart of the church. That this wasn't a game. This wasn't something that people could just play. But this is something that they needed to take with their full heart, body, soul, and spirit. And so what happened, they came in. And as you know, when the brother came in, and Ananias, and he comes in, and he speaks to Peter, and he tells him, this is, this is what's happened. And Peter says to him, like, where, what, has, what has the devil done in you? You know, what has filled your heart? Because you're not, you're not telling the truth here. And so God then takes his life right there. <laughs> they carry him out to the gravesite. And then his wife comes in and I guess they had figured, okay, they don't, God, God's not going to know. And the disciples won't, won't know. But we'll sell the property for 70 and we'll keep 20. And they can have the 50, so they'll be happy. But then we will make sure that we won't go out or go without by ourselves because we give it all away and we got nothing. And that means we would have to just, then what would we do? See, they didn't get the idea that they're going to give it away to the Lord. That they have to also trust in the Lord. And so his wife comes in and she gives the same story to Peter. And Peter says, you know, the same two, the same group of people that just carried your husband out, they're at the door and now they're going to carry you out too. Because you have lied to the Spirit. And, and I think that's what a problem is, is that in our, our churches and in our discipleship walk, we're not always truthful with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I know we don't want to, uh, you know, kind of probably give a thumbs up to that, but sometimes some things that get stretched a little bit are not quite right. We need to be truthful. We need to understand that our accountability isn't always just with each other and not just always with the church. Our accountability comes with our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the head. And the Bible says he records all things. These things are going to be asked of us. So that's why we need to have that holy, righteous fear of the Lord because there's going to be a need of accountability. And so when they came here, the scripture verses said in Acts 5.11, So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. So now the church is in, I guess you could say, in fearful mode, not by what the world can do now. They're beginning to understand what God can see and do now. 
And I think that's what the problem is, is in North America and around the world, that we don't have that righteous, holy, honorable fear of the Lord, understanding that He sees all things. Yes, He pours out His grace. Yes, He pours out His mercy. Yes, when we lie, He doesn't strike us dead, but He also wants us to ask for forgiveness. But in the early church, as the early church was beginning to grow, God wanted to show them that they needed to have a righteous, holy fear of the Lord. And it's interesting, out of that, there were signs and wonders. Out of that, the church continued to grow. Out of that, worship began to really increase. So, wow, look what the fruit is when we have that honorable, righteous respect of the Lord. It changes our lives. It causes us to look at things differently. You know, whatever we're in, we should always understand that God is with us. We should always understand that we're grafted into the Lord and we can't sneak around thinking He doesn't see or hear. He knows all things. He understands all things. He's there when it comes to everything in our life. He is there. And so we need to come back to the fear of the Lord. Again, if we want revival, if we want to see the church grow, we as disciples, as individuals, need to come back to the fear of the Lord and understand that all things are in His hands. All ability is in His hands. All knowledge and understanding is in His hands. And that when we get grafted into Him and connected into Him, we come in unity and harmony because we now have a reverent, holy respect for the Lord. Amen? That's what it's all about. Well, in Acts chapter 9... Again, as we are, as the disciples are walking along the road, uh, we get this in, in Acts chapter 9, verse 31, where it says to us here, it says, Then the churches, so now here the word churches is plural. So we're in the Acts chapter 9, and we just get a, a conversion of Saul, who becomes Paul. And, and and I think he had really got, uh, he moved from having a religious background. And I think, that, again, that's another problem, that in so many of our churches, many of our disciples are religious people and not people who are under the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Because Paul was very religious. He tells us, gives testimony who he was, and we'll talk about that in a few moments. But then he goes on and he has an encounter with Jesus Christ. And now he has a righteous, honorable, holy fear of the Lord. And up until that time, people even feared him because he was getting people and putting them in prison and all kinds of things and rounding them up. But then it goes on in verse 31, after we have this conversion of Paul, it says then in verse 31, then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria. Now listen to this. This is not long after. We now have churches in Judea, Galilee and Samaria had peace and were edified, were being lifted up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. If there's a verse that I think we need to put on a t-shirt, this is the one. Okay? Because it was a word to the churches and it was a testimony of the churches that God was bringing peace into their lives and was now edifying and building them up. And I love, and what does it say? And they walked in the fear of the Lord. That's the question. That's the thing we got to ask today. That's what I'm asking myself today. Am I walking in the fear of the Lord? But I'm, you know, as soon as you say that, people think, well, you, you're talking about a God with a baseball bat. No, you're not. You're, you're saying when you come into the fear of the Lord, Lord, I honor you as my king. I respect you as my Lord. I, I, I humble you myself before you as my Savior. And I come before you as Christ who wants to anoint me. That's what I'm doing. I'm not cringing because he's going to hit me. I'm opening up my arm and say, God, give me more. Give me more, Lord, because of who you are. And so that's why he says, and they walked in the fear of the Lord. Wouldn't it be nice if we could have a sermon over the next couple weeks around the world 
teaching people how to walk in the fear of the Lord. I wonder what kind of change that would bring about. I wonder what that would do in the body of Christ. I wonder how that would change our attitudes. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. You can message me and tell me what you think. But I think we're on to something here. You know, in the midst of all this COVID-19 and all the other stuff that's going around, maybe God is just trying to bring us back to the place of saying, hey, look to me. Look to Jesus. Look to Christ. Look to him as Lord. Look to him as King. Get a different understanding that you don't need to fear the things of this world. But what you do need is to have a reverence, holy respect for God. And they walked in the fear of the Lord. And look what happened. We already saw when they walked in the fear of the Lord, the church grew. We saw that when they walked in the fear of the Lord, there was discipline. We saw when they walked in the fear of the Lord, we now see that they're edified and built up. And he goes on, not only that, now listen to this. When they walked in the fear of the Lord, this is the part I wish we could take more time on. They were comforted by the Holy Spirit. Wow, what an amazing verse. Did you get that? When they walked in the fear of the Lord. So that means in their daily journey, as they're, they're not sitting in a, and crouched in a room thinking that, you know, something terrible is going to happen and we better hide and wait it out. No, when they walked in the fear of the Lord. The scripture says, and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, what happened? What happened? Look at it. What happened? They were multiplied. The body grew. The body grew. They multiplied. You want to see church growth? You want to see revival? <laughs> you want to receive renewal? What needs to happen is getting back to old-fashioned walking in the fear of the Lord. Are you with me on that? Am I telling you the truth? I'm not trying to make it up. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. <laughs> this is what the Bible is talking about. That we need to get back. This is where the early church was. And has the present day church got away from walking in the fear of the Lord? That's my question. And the answer I think I would come up with, because I have to look at my own self, is the answer, yes. We don't have that holy, reverent, respect honorable fear of the Lord like the early church did and if we would have it I believe that God would not only fill us he would multiply and grow his church to a place that we never thought was possible in Acts chapter 10 verse 22 we have here again some scripture that is written to us and we got this whole episode with with Simon Peter and uh, he's going to go to Cornelius' house. Now, he, he's going, Simon Peter's got, he's going to have a vision here. And his, and his vision is a weird one. You know, I mean, he's, he's, he's up, upstairs on the roof praying. And God lets down this blanket with all kinds of stuff in it. And the Lord says to him, take eat. And Peter says, not a chance. I haven't done that since I was a, a child. And I'm not going to do it now. And so Peter was fearing those, what he thought was unclean things. And God was saying, I, you know, things have changed, Peter. That was the old. I brought about something new. And now what's going to be new is that you need to understand not the fear of the law or the fear of religion. What you need is to have a righteous, holy, honorable fear of our Lord who pours out grace, not only to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles. And what happens? He, he, he has this vision and, and God tells him, not only he shows it to him three times, you know, Paul's got a kind of a thick head, or not Paul, Peter's got kind of a thick head and doesn't really want to, you know, and then God just, just to kind of get Peter into the place of understanding what he was trying to teach him about grace, there's a knock at the door because somebody has been sent from Cornelius' house and says, 
you know, we've been told by God to come here, and the thing is, they're Gentiles. And now, there's a problem. I mean, Peter was, you know, really struggling with, you know, should I eat these kinds of things? And now he was really going to have to struggle with because the tradition was, you don't go to some Gentile's house. If you did, you have to go through purification. <laughs> oh, I could say lots of things about this, but I'll just leave it there anyway. And so what happens as we get uh, where the, Peter is now, he does go, he's obedient. He has respect and holy, honorable fear of the Lord. And he goes, even though he doesn't understand the blanket thing, he doesn't understand God, what are you doing? They're taking me to the Gentile house. And then, and then, so here's what Peter says. And Peter opened his mouth in verse 34 and said, In truth, I perceive God shows no partiality. So now he's now beginning to realize, okay, I understand that something about God that I didn't get before, that I need to respect and honor because God shows no partiality. But in verse 35, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is acceptable by him. And I love that. If we have an honorable, holy respect of the Lord, God is going to do powerful things in our lives. Well, let's keep going. Acts chapter 13, verse 16. We have here another account of what, how we're to walk in the Lord and how we're to see things. We got uh, an episode going on in Antioch and there's some discussion. Paul is now there. And in Antioch, we see this verse in uh, 1316. It says, Then Paul stood up, motioning with his hand, and said, Men of Israel and you who fear God, listen. I love that. Men of Israel and those who fear God, have a listen now because I'm going to tell you something. So there was people, what are you saying? There's two groups of people. People had a, who had a religious respect for God, but didn't really fear him. And then there was people who really feared God and respected him and lived for him. And so now that Paul was in at this place, he was now going to speak on behalf of what God was going to tell him to share. And of course, he gives him, gives to them the gospel message. He gives to them a word that was going to change the people's lives. Well, we got one more verse that we want to look at today is found in Acts 27, uh, verse 24. And we got Peter or Paul now. Sorry, I get my Pauls and Peters mixed up because I get excited and I get to <laughs> turn them around. Paul now is going to go down to Jerusalem and then he was in Jerusalem and now he's being sent to because he appealed to Caesar. <laughs> and you know what? You know what I love about Paul? He has no fear of man. He has no fear of man. And and Paul goes to the people in Jerusalem the leader, and the people in authority there and says, you know, I haven't done anything wrong, and I've been walking in the fear of the Lord. I serve Jesus Christ. It's not a religion. It's a faith. It's a life-changing faith. And, you know, if you are going to put me in jail, you know what I want to do right now? I'm going to appeal to Caesar. And so he appeals to Caesar. I mean, Paul says, take me right to the top. And of course, that was a prophetic word that the Lord shared with Paul when he was Saul. That I have a purpose for you. I have a calling that I'm going to move you around and you're going to speak to both the lowest and the highest. So they're on a ship and they're heading off and they get into a big storm. And Paul says to them saying, do not be afraid. Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So the Lord just comes along and says, okay, Paul, looks. this is probably one of the worst things you have. You're in a boat right now. You're out in the ocean, and it looks like it's going to go down. But don't be afraid. I'm with you. The God who is in control of the winds and the waves, the God who is in control of all things, the God who you worship 
and you fear with reverence, holiness, and righteous respect is with you. And because of that, you need not to be afraid, because I am going to bring you before Caesar. And you're going to be able to proclaim my name before Caesar. No matter what the world will throw at you, Paul, I'm going to bring you before Caesar. So don't fear the world. Don't fear the, all the stuff that's going on in the environment around you. But not only am I going to spare you, but I'm also going to spare those who are with you. As he says, And indeed God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore take heart, for I believe God that it will be just as he told me. So he says to the sailors, he says to all the people, all the other prisoners, take heart. Because when my God speaks, it happens. Take heart and fear the Lord. Because when you fear the Lord, there is going to be great signs and wonders. There's going to be great growth in the church. The church is going to multiply when we get back to having a righteous, honorable, holy, respectful fear of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you're teaching us through your word. We thank you for what you're teaching us, Lord, about how we should honor and respect you. We thank you, Lord, that as Lord, we bow down to your lordship. As king, we humbly bow ourselves before you as king. As our savior, we humbly bow ourselves that you will save us. And Lord, we also humbly bow and come before you as our Christ, who desires to anoint us and to flow through us and to work in our lives every day and every moment of that day. And we thank you now for the opportunity to be able to pray and to understand a little bit more about having a righteous, holy, reverent fear of you. And Lord, I pray that you would start with each one of us who hears this word this day. And we give you thanks for what you're going to do, Jesus, in our lives. For it's in your precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. Keep on keeping on. And Lord willing, we will see you again tomorrow. Okay? Bye-bye for now.